Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Cast. This is Jamie, and I'm so grateful that you're tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast. Today, I'm going to share with you my favorite mattresses and my favorite bedding. I have done a previous podcast on mattresses before, but it was a while back, and I've had more time to sleep on both the one we have at home and the one we have at the farm, two of the top brands. So I'm going to give you my take on those. I'm going to briefly give you some tips on things to keep in mind when you choose your mattress, if you're going to do the adjustable and have different options. And then I'm going to end with something I get a lot of questions about, especially Instagram DMs. When I'm doing a try on in the master bedroom, I will get many DMs asking about our bedding. We, about a year ago, got our new bed. We had a a custom designed bed and or headboard and I bought all new bedding. Get a lot of questions. So I was going to toss that in at the end. Okay, guys, choosing a mattress. The first thing you're going to do is Google. And I can just tell you the best way that is a pit that you don't want to go down. I mean, if you want to read reviews, that's great. But in my opinion, word of mouth from people you trust is the best way to narrow down your choices of what mattresses to look at. And then ultimately, you can decide between a few. But I ended up buying a sleep number for our master bedroom at home. And that was not even on my radar. I didn't really know much about them. And a dear friend of mine, Cindy Wainwright, who I trust her her decision-making, her research, she's very fastidious and digs deep into um, research of any kind of product that she, that's that's an investment. So I was about to buy another mattress at Macy's, like a beauty rest, and Cindy told me that she and her husband had just purchased a sleep number and they loved it. So I backtracked from the beauty rest, ended up with a sleep number. And this is my take on the sleep number. If uh, my other mattress at the farm is a dream cloud, and here's the bottom line, they're both excellent mattresses. If I were gonna have a vacation home other than the farm, I would do dream cloud. But for my one bed that I sleep in most nights of my life, I would choose a sleep number. And here's why. The sleep number is like no other bed in the amount of feedback it will give you on your sleep cycles, your circadian rhythm. And I'm I'm just going to show you. And if you're on the podcast, I apologize because my YouTube people are going to be able to see this. But you have an app. If you get a sleep number and it's called sleep IQ and on this app, you can adjust your bed. There's a press smart bed. And as you can see, there's Jamie, that's my side and Zane, that's his side. So in the middle of the night, if I need to change a setting, I just press Jamie and I can raise the head of the bed or the foot of the bed and Zane can do the same. My setting is 30. Zane is 85. We have very different sleep preferences, which leads me to another great thing about the sleep number is that not only can you do the split mattresses, which you can do with any mattress, but each side, you can choose your setting, your density, your level, and you can't do that with any other mattress. And I'm just going to tell you, I didn't know how much I was going to appreciate all of this feedback with the Sleep IQ, but I have actually become obsessed with it because sleep is so important, especially as we get older. And it is so helpful to know how your sleep patterns are week to week, night to night. Last night, I did not have a good sleep night. It was, my sleep score was 52. My best has been 95. My average sleep score is 73. But 52 is cause for concern. That's not good sleep. And it will give you details. It took me 17 minutes to fall asleep. I was up three times. 
and my I had an hour and 23 minutes of restless sleep and it gave suggestions and it tells why is this important and it says I mean it just gives you so much about your particular sleep pattern and it does the same for your spouse it's just on a completely different side you know you switch back and forth and then he has his on his app so guys bottom line yes I would choose sleep number again I love it and I feel like it is worth the money especially for the master bedroom my kids I would I'm not going to buy them a sleep number because they're they're kids um they're they're out of that they're I wear empty nests now but I would not have bought that for my younger kids but I think as we're older and if we're going to get the best that we can get I would say sleep number now dream cloud very 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 comfortable bed I would recommend getting there's I believe just two levels get the the nicest one it's just a little bit more it is extremely luxurious in that it's got a lot of cushion now if you don't like a lot of cushion you may not like a dream cloud but I do love my dream cloud as does Zane we just have a normal dream cloud mattress at the farm we don't have any adjustments so I can't speak to that but I will say I love it so if you just want a really comfortable mattress if you're not going to avail yourselves of the app if you don't care about feedback, then I would say, I, I mean, if you don't care about all this, all these bells and whistles that you get with a sleep number, then I would recommend a dream cloud because it is cushier. It is going to have a softer feel. A dream, a sleep number does have a little bit of a, an adjustment or a, a acclimation in my opinion, because it's more like air pockets that you know you inflate or deflate based on the number that you choose and I had to get used to that now you know I wouldn't and I did get some toppers at sleep number that make it more cushy but if you just want a good old comfy cushy no bells and whistles mattress then I would set, suggest dream cloud because it's going to be a lot cheaper and if you don't want all the other why would you pay for it so that is my take on choosing the mattress. Now I do want to throw in one tip and thankfully they have a sleep number has fabulous customer service, next level customer service. We initially bought a split King. It was connected at the bottom, but the um, adjustments you, we could, like if I wanted to um, press my remote and raise up to watch TV, I could do that and Zane could sleep. So you, we could adjust the heads. But if I decided, hey, I want to elevate my legs. If I pressed elevate legs, it would move his side as well. And we quickly learned that that didn't work. So we were able to return that within the window of our return policy. And we got a completely split king. So I adjust my side how I like it. Zane adjusts his side how he likes it. And everybody's happy. And we have not had any problems. The only thing that is a slight drawback is when the bed is made, I have to be really careful to really pull the bedding and have like the the blanket smoothed out, or you can see a little bit of the split, like the indention. So you just have to be a little more attentive to when making your bed, not to let that crease show. But anyway, so that's my take on best mattress. Now, I love my bedding. This bedding is fabulous. So YouTube people, y'all get to see it. I'm going to let you all know this bedding is linked in my like to know it. And I will also link to it in the show notes because I've got two different sets and they're different colors and uh, uh, they're all neutral, but there's an ivory and there is a, there's taupe. So I will link to exactly what I have in the show notes and you can also find it. And I like to know it now I'm going to start it. 
telling you the name of the brand. It's Lily Alessandra. So I'm holding it up. This has not been opened because this is my winter bedding. And currently it's summer. So I have my summer bedding and they're basically the same, just a little different um, color wave. The thing I love about Lily Alessandra is it is the perfect bedding if you are not going to worry about babies and dogs getting on your bed. I mean, listen, there's no, the dog can get on the bed at my house and babies. And if you have dogs and babies, somebody's going to throw up. Somebody's going to have an accident. And I don't want to have to send things to the dry cleaners. Lily Alessandra is luxurious and beautiful, but guys, you can wash it. Tucker has thrown up on my summer bedding that's on the bed now he has gotten paw prints on the coverlet which I'm going to lean back where you can see the coverlet that that com this is a comfort let I'm sorry this is a comfort let meaning it's a little thicker than a coverlet okay um you can wash it and guys it washes beautifully now I'm going to tell you though listen closely and I made an Instagram reel and I'm going to share this on every platform I have because it's super important to know. Bedding can be washable, but you cannot expect to be able to throw the bedding in the washer, soiled and stained, turn on the washer and think that it's going to come out clean. You can do more harm than good that way. You have to get the stains out before you put it in the washer. Now that's my experience. If you just have overall, you know, hey, the bed, you know, we haven't washed in a year, let's wash the coverlet and you don't see any visible stains, then sure, you can just give it a fresh and fresh, fresh cleaning. But if you have spots or if you have stains, you're going to want to spread out the coverlet or the sham cover, and you're going to want to treat it with the spot remover, I use a little bit of laundry detergent and typically I use warm water. If you have blood, if you have a blood stain, you never put warm water on blood, you do cold water, but you're going to want to treat the stain or address the issue with a, I usually use a toothbrush and then the spot remover and the detergent. And you're going to want to vigorously, you got to use your elbow grease. You're going to work on that stain until you see it lift. And you may have to pour some club soda through it or water to make sure it's all gone. Then you wash it. So I just want to make sure that y'all understand that because this is not inexpensive, but the term washable comes with a caveat. You have to address any issues before you put it in the washer. Okay. And it does fit in my front load washer and my front load dryer. So you don't have to take it, to, you know, anywhere else. Okay, so this is Lily Alessandra. I do not like down comforters, so there will not be a down comforter in my discussion, but any of this, you can get a coverlet for a down comforter, but what I have is I have a winter coverlet, and then I have a summer coverlet, and I do the, I've do velvet on both. I love the velvet look and we do King. So this is Chloe King Comfort Lit in ivory velvet. And I just want y'all to see, this is a beautiful, beautiful, I would say neutral to possibly cool ivory. It's not a warm, undertone of gold, which I do not like that in my bedding. I want it to be crisp and either neutral or cool. And what's beautiful about this is the sheen. It's just got a luxurious sheen. It's fabulous. And you can wash it. Okay. Here is what is currently on my bed. Okay. I've got it linked and like to know it. I think this is also ivory. But do you see how pretty, do you see that sheen? It's, and when the light hits it, it's just beautiful. And I don't think I've ever had to wash the shams, but if you do, see, you just unzip and it's that easy. Okay, so basically what I do is I do a coverlet 
but you could do a down comforter with a duvet, but I do a coverlet and then I do king shams. I do two of the king shams. And then I like to do either three medium size euros. They've got a name, but look how beautiful, or two large euros. So these are both euros and podcast friends. I am so very sorry that y'all can't see this, but this is the large euro, the big square. And look how beautiful guys, if you like just classic, clean and crisp and look at that detail, that trim, it's exquisite. Okay. So we have that. So I either have two or three of these and then I have a decorative pillow like this in front of each of the euros. It's a little smaller. And then I have one decorative pillow at the front of that. I'll put a picture in the show notes, but guys, the, the clean lines and the trim, it's very, very, very high quality. And I just think it makes such a difference in the way your bedroom looks. The aesthetic is fabulous. But then again, you've got that practical aspect of being able to wash it and take care of stains. So anyway, I hope that that was helpful. And if y'all have any questions about bedding or mattresses, always feel free to reach out to me, jamie at familysavvy.com. And I will link to the bedding. There's no link to sleep number or the um, dream cloud. I'll just mention them and link you to their website. But anyway, hope this helps. If you have a current search for betting or a future search for betting. But anyway, guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, be blessed and stay savvy.